Back in episode 33, I showed you how to make a plugin for Rails. But nowadays I prefer gems over plugins. So how do we do something similar, but instead of making a Rails plugin, just make a gem to extend Rails functionality? Well, that's what I want to show you in this episode. Now let's say I want to create a gem which can generate a unique token for a, an active record model. So let's say I have a token column inside this recipe model. It'd be nice if I could just call uniqify token, and that'll set up a before create callback so that whenever I save a recipe, it generates an automatic random token and make sure that it's unique in the database. Now you can make a Ruby gem from scratch, but that can be quite a bit of work. So usually you can use one of these other Ruby gems to help you out in making your gem. Now a lot of these provide generators that will create the necessary files for you automatically, so you just have to fill in the details. That's really great, especially if you're just beginning. But I find some of the files that are generated aren't necessary or don't really fit my style or my needs. So I prefer to create the files uh, manually as I need them. And you'll see in this episode, it's actually very simple to create the, the necessary files manually. And so to do that, I'm just going to use the echo gem here in this episode and just create files as needed. Okay, so the first step is just to install echo with that command. All right, so once you do that, you can just make a new directory here for your project. Um, my gem will be called uniqueify, and I'll just ta toss in a lib directory in there as well. So for this gem, I'm, it's just going to be three simple files. Uh, one is uh, the readme, of course, and I'm going to end it with .rdoc so it uh, renders formats properly on GitHub. And then I have a rake file, and then my uh, Ruby file, which will be loaded when you require the gem. Let's first start off with the rake file, and this is where we define our gem. So I'm just going to paste in some code, and we can use the echo, just create a new echo instance, and that will create a new gem, give it the name of our gem, uniqueify, and then our version number. And then inside of a block here, you're just defining some variables you know, description URL, and so on. It's pretty self-explanatory. The ignore pattern is just the part that you don't want included inside of your gem, the files. Um, we don't really have a temp or script directory here right now, but I, sometimes I like to add those. And then the development dependencies, um, the reason I'm setting this to an empty array is because Echo defaults to adding itself as a development dependency. Now, normally this should work okay but I find it causes some problems on older versions of Ruby gems if someone tries to install the gem from that. So I like to set this to an empty array until those problems are solved. And then we're just looking to see if there's a tasks directory and any rake files inside of there, and we're going to load them uh, inside this rake file. So I don't have to go back and add any tasks directly to this file. I can make my own tasks directory here if I need to. And that's really all there is to the rake file. And next we just need to implement the actual functionality of our gem, uh, just do whatever we want it to do. In this case I'll just add a module called uniqueify, which is the name of our gem, that's usually the custom convention. And, um, and then when it's included into active record, it'll add these class methods, the uniqueify class method, which will do whatever we want of creating a before um, callback, before create callback, uh, which will generate a unique token. And then we just include uniqueify directly into active record base uh, when it's loaded. Now I'm not showing here how to test this functionality because that varies greatly depending on whatever testing framework you're using. Um, really test it just like you would any other Ruby project. That's really what a gem is. It's just a, uh, a lib directory with some Ruby files in there and you would just add a test directory or spec directory to your gem and test it that way. And last but not least, our documentation. And I'll just paste in some documentation into here, and of course this will be very specific to whatever gem you're making. But that's just really all that's needed to make a Ruby gem. Really the only gem-specific part of this Ruby project is this rake file and these, you know, eight lines here specific to um, Echo and specifying that this is a gem. Now that we've finished building our project files, how do we test out this functionality and publish our gems? Well, this is usually accomplished through rake tasks. And with echo, the first thing you want to do is just call rake manifest. 
Otherwise, you won't be able to call any other rake tasks. And this just keeps track of a list of files inside of your gem. Next, you could just call rake install, and this will actually install the gem on your local machine, and just so you can test it out. Now, once you know your gem is working properly, you can publish it, whether it be to RubyForge or GitHub. Uh, there's some rake tasks for doing so, so let's take a look at those. Um, if you already have a RubyForge project set up, you can do a simple rake release, and that will build the gem and upload it to RubyForge. And then you could do rake publish docs to build the R docs and upload those as well. Well, what if we want to publish this gem on GitHub? Well, the steps are a little bit different. So let's start by making a new project on GitHub for this gem. Just create the repository. And next we just have to turn this into a git repository with git init, and then we can make a .git ignore file because we want to ignore a couple of directories in here. I like to ignore the package doc directories and the manifest file because all these are f files that are generated by uh, echo using the rake tasks. Now we just have to add all of our files, make our initial commit, and then um, mention our remote repository and push it up there. There we go, now our project is on GitHub. Now to turn this into a gem, we have to do a couple things because right now it's just a simple project. Uh, one thing is we have to check the Ruby gem box when you're editing your project on GitHub. And the other thing you have to do is build a gem spec file. Now with Echo, that's very easy. Just use a rake task called build gem spec. It doesn't show up in the rake list, but it still is a valid task you can call. And now if we take a look at our directories, you can see that we now have a unicify.gemspec file. And then if we add this to our repository and then commit, and push those up, there we go. Now our, our project is now considered a gem on GitHub and we just have to wait for it to, to build the gem. So that's pretty much the bare minimum you need to create a gem. Of course you want to expand upon this and add files as necessary. A good practice is to add a changelog file to keep track of your changes and you can organize this how you want and update it as you uh, release new versions of gems. And speaking of which, uh, to release a new version it's really easy. Just change your rake file, the version number in there, and then you could just do uh, run the rake manifest task again and the rake build gem spec. And that's it. If now if you upload this to, to GitHub again, it'll see the new version and uh, build a new gem. Now here's a little tip. You can make this gem that we just created act as a Rails plugin as well, very easily just by adding an init.rb file. And in here just say require uniqify or whatever the name of your file in your lib directory is. And this will lo load up that file when it gets insert it into a Rails project as a plugin. And then once that's pushed to your repository, just do script plugin install, and then just the URL to your repository, and then it will be installed as a plugin. So you give them an option to choose whether they like the plugin or a gem. This episode is sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. There you will find high quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.